So in this lesson, we're going to revisit linked lists. But this time we're going to see what it looks like to represent a linked list inside a 2D array. So in this lesson, first we'll remind ourselves what a 2D array is and what it looks like. And then we'll show how we can append, insert and delete nodes on a linked list and show these operations as they would affect a 2D array. Remember that a linked list is a data structure made of elements called nodes. Each node has an item of data and a pointer to the next node. In the last presentation, we visualized a linked list using arrows to represent the pointers between the nodes. But this lesson, we're going to think about the same data and the same pointers, but shown in a different way. This is a different way of visualizing a linked list in a 2D array. Remember that a 2D array consists of rows and columns. This 2D array has got seven different data, sorry, it's got eight different data locations. Each data location has got two values in it, some data and a pointer. So both this and the other method using arrows, they're just visualizations of what's going on inside the computer. It's just two different ways of visualizing the same underlying data inside the computer. Inside the computer, it's all done with electricity. So neither of these are totally accurate, but they allow us to think about and to write down what is happening inside the computer in a way that a human being can understand. As well as storing the data locations of the linked list, the computer remembers two further locations. It remembers the location, which is the header of the linked list. This is where the linked list starts. The computer also stores the location of a free spot in memory. It's actually the operating system that takes care of this and you don't need to worry too much about it. Suffice to say that the computer will always know where there is some spare memory ready for it to use. And we call that the free pointer. It's pointing to a free location. In this case, as you can see, location six is empty. And so the computer has remembered that. And that's where it will, that's where it will store any new data. So, if we wanted to append a node, that is add a new node to the end of the list, we would store the new data at the free space. And we change the final pointer of the list to point to this free space. And last but not least, we'd have to reset the free space value because that location is no longer free. So let's see that in action. Let's append the data value X to the list. The free pointer is pointing to six. So we insert X at the free space. We traverse the list to the end and change the final pointer of the list so that it points to the free space. Now X has been joined to the list. However, the free space is no longer free, so the operating system would update that to a new free location. So here's another example for you to try. Here's another linked list. You'll see the pointers are different, so the, the sequence of the list is a bit different. Copy down this into your book and then make all the changes needed to append the value G to the end of the list. You can stop the video, so I'm going to show you the answer in a moment. So here's how to do it. The free pointer is pointing to position six. 
So we would add G at position six. We would then traverse the list to the end. The last value in the list is E. So we change the pointer at E to point to the new location six. We've now added G to the list. Finally, we update the free pointer to point to a new free data location. So that's how we append a value to the list, quite easy. It's almost as easy to insert a node in the middle of the list. Here's the checklist of what to do. We add the data at the free space as before. We find the place that we want to insert our node and we copy the pointer across so that it's so that the new free space is hooked into the list. We change our pointer so that it now points to our new node and we reset the free space value. Perhaps it'll be easier to understand that if we look at an example. Here I want to insert the value X after the value C. So first of all, we'll put in the value X at the free pointer. There it is, it's in the new free space. We want it to come after C. So we take the pointer at C and we copy it down to the new node. Now the new node will continue through to point to the rest of the list. And finally, the pointer at C must be changed to point to the new node. So if we followed this list, starting at zero, it would go A points to B, B points to C, C points to X, X points to D, D points to E, E points to F, and F is the end of the list. So X has been successfully inserted into the list after the letter C. It's all done by using the pointers. Now you try it. Copy this linked list into your book and make changes so that the value X is inserted after A in this linked list. You can pause the video to write this in your book and then I'm going to show you the, the right answer. The first thing we do is add X at the free pointer, which is six. So X has been added to, um, to our data array. Then we move the pointer from A down to the new node. This hooks the node into the list so that the remainder of the list is not lost. And finally, we change the value the pointer at A to point to the new node. And with all that done, we change the free pointer so it points to a new free data location. So after all this, your array should look like that. Did you get it right? Similarly, when we delete a node, all we have to do is find the node to delete and copy its pointer back to the node before it, and that will make the computer skip over that node. Let's see that in action. Let's suppose we wanted to delete D from this list. D is pointed to by C. So we change the pointer at C so that it skips over D. We don't have to delete or overwrite the value D or its pointer. The computer will just skip over them now. And let's check it. If we traverse the list, we start at A, which points to one. At one, we find B, which points to two. At two, we find C, which points to four. At four, we find E, 
that points to F and that's the end of the list. So we've we've skipped over location three. There's no pointer to location D, so the computer will not go to it. Now you try it. Here's another example of um, a linked list, similar to the one you used before. Copy it into your book and make changes so that the value A is not present in the linked list. What you would do is delete the pointer to A and make it skip over A directly to location one. So with that one simple change, changing the pointer from the, the pointer that pointed to A is changed to skip over A and that effectively A is deleted from the list. OK, how many operations would it take for the computer to do all of these things? Well, to get to the right place in the list to make changes to the pointers, it's got to traverse the whole list following the links. So almost all actions are um, have n take n operations where n is the number of items in the list. I guess if you were inserting or deleting from the middle of a list, it would be fewer than n. but worst case and certainly if we're appending where we have to go to the very end of the list it would be n operations and that's a lot lot slower than what it takes to work with stacks and queues so here's a task see if you can insert x as the first item in the list here's a clue you're going to have to change the header value for this list so see if you can do that and write that in your book so this lesson you looked at what it what an what a list looks like in a 2d array and how we can work with that 2d array to append insert and delete mostly by changing the pointers of the list if you're my student there's a worksheet to continue thinking about list operations in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how you can write a Python program to create a linked list. So see you then. Bye for now.